try to figure out. It's, it's just the explain everything thing. Um, okay, so typing. Evidence of continental drift. We'll start with point number one. Okay, one of my favorites is identical fossils. Yes. So, for example, I'm not going to do, this isn't going to be a great picture, but that's South America, and then, like, way across the Atlantic Ocean is Africa. Madagascar's right there. Um, first of all, they found, uh, they find fossils, like, they have the same fossils in Madagascar as in Africa, but there are also similar fossils in South America as there are in Africa. Okay. Um, something I want you guys to think about, if you're going to try and push yourself to a level four and you want to really do some research on this and try and come up with, like, other answers, um, I want you guys to think about, like, um, finding specific examples. Like, were there, um, like, the same type of mammoth in South America as Africa or the same type of mammoth in North America and Europe, okay? Just an example of one thing you could do to look up more information than me just saying they found identical fossils. Do you guys remember that from the little Bill Nye video we watched anyway? Hopefully. Hopefully. Okay. Um, let's see. And go to another slide. Maybe. Slide. Add slide. Cool. Okay. Um, and piece of evidence number two that should also be familiar is the puzzle piece thing. Well, no, but the fact that, um, I'll draw the same thing again, that South America kind of like locks into place with it Africa. Like it's not very, yeah, it looks like a dinosaur. Uh, what is that? It's a, it's a dinosaur with an underbite. Okay, actually what it really is, is Africa and South America. Okay, yeah, South African, South American African dinosaur. Okay, but those aren't the only ones. You guys saw on the Pangaea puzzle that they all obviously used to fit together, and um, scientists have also theorized um, that before Pangaea, they were all a different way as well. Like the, the continental drift is just the mantle recycling itself. Like it's either coming up and being crushed or getting crushed down and not being crushed anymore and becoming mantle. Does that make sense, hopefully? That's probably nice. All right, new pieces of evidence. Um, piece, new piece number one. Um, we're going to call it glacial striation. All right, I'm going to keep, I keep drawing the same, oops. No, what? Why did it just do that? I know, I don't know why I just erased it. I'll type it again. Okay. Um, anyway, I keep drawing the same example, but I don't really have... It's easiest to draw these ones, really. Africa and South America. So what they found... Glacial striation. Striation. Whoa. Okay, kind of learn how this works. All right. Um, so, for example, back in the Ice Age times, when these continents were touching, there were giant glaciers covering them. I can't really, like, tell you the whole thing white. But there were giant glaciers covering them when they were together. So when those glaciers melt, they, they kind of, like, slide off into the ocean, and when they're sliding off in the ocean, they're not really doing it nice and neatly. They're, like, grinding over the earth. And so what they found is that these, there's stripes that are in point, going the same direction on continents that used to touch. Okay, so these are my little glacial striations, or stripes, in other words. Does that kind of make sense? It's like, that's why we have big, giant granite rocks sitting in 
random places in the main woods because glacier they were melted they were dragged by glaciers and just dropped when the glacier melted more okay and I've got five pieces of evidence so we're on number four Sea floor spreading. So some of you should know this one because you were doing the ocean, mapping the ocean floor. Um, and I'm just going to draw, like, here's my ocean. Okay. Um, here's the, a cross section of the ocean floor. Okay, I'll just go back up here. Okay. So these are my continents over here. Okay, and this is obviously the sea floor down here. Okay, I don't, I want another color, but I don't really know how to pick other colors in this. So, um, if we think that, um, if we think of under here, where I'm doodling, as the hot liquid magma of the mantle, when continental plates are pulling apart, now, sea floor spreading means divergent plates, means they're pulling apart, okay? When they're pulling apart like that, the, that gives an opening for the magma, the hot mantle, to push up on that area where they're, pu where they're pushing apart. So if there's enough pressure, it pushes up and it makes a ridge, okay? Or um, as it's pulling apart, it makes like a, like a mountain range. Or if it's close enough to the surface, it makes a little volcanic mountain range, okay? Okay, volcanic island arc, more likely, if it's in the ocean. of a horrible picture, but, okay? So seafloor spreading, again, is evidence of continental drift, because what they're seeing is the seafloor is slowly pulling apart, okay? And if the seafloor is pulling apart, then that means the continents on either side of them are pulling apart from each other. Okay, um, a level four type question for this would be, um, Harry Hess is the guy that discovered it, so I would be curious to know what he was doing, because um, it's not like he was like, I'm going to go prove continental drift. Um, I think he was doing this around the time of World War II, so I'd be interested to know what he was actually doing out there when he was discovered this, because um, oftentimes scientists discover things that they don't mean to discover. Um, and then another question for me that I think of is, um, if this change occurs over millions of years, how is it that they were able to detect seafloor spreading in such a short period of time, like in months or years or however long it took them to research this, how did they even see seafloor spreading? At least that's mine. That's what I just wonder. Questions on that one before we do the last one? Okay. And number five is magnetic striping. Oh, I want it to be the same color. Type. Type now. Magnetic what? Magnetic striping. What's that? Uh, well, I have been explaining all the other ones, so I think I will explain this one as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're um, we're under the ocean again. Okay, that's my ocean. That's amazing. Yeah, and so where there, where the seafloor is spreading, I'm drawing it a little differently. I'm drawing it kind of looking down on it now. Where the seafloor is spreading, okay, the Earth's polarity reverses every couple million years or so. I don't know the exact number, but it reverses polarity. So what that means is that um, the north hasn't always been north, okay? We call it, mag it's magnetic north, right? So we call it magnetic north because that's where it is now, but it's not always been that way. It actually flips polarity every couple million years, okay? So what we see is these stripes, um, I'll try and color it like that. We see, like, if this is the middle, <laughs> okay, if this is the middle part, if this is where the seafloor spreading is happening, um, north is this way, okay, and south is down here, okay, but then as you go out from a spread out seafloor, you find that there's a different chunk where this is south, this was south, okay, where it was reversed, negative, okay, and then when you go out further, you find that it's north again, Okay, and then you go out, oops, you go out further, and there's a different stripe, and it's south again. Does that striping kind of make sense? I 
do it the best I could. I'm not yeah, yeah. the bestest of artists. But basically, this middle part is, um, if I, we call this the mid-ocean ridge. Okay, mid-ocean R. Um, but that's where, that's where the actual seafloor spreading is occurring. So if you start from the middle and you go out, you find that it's magnetically striped. It, the polarities reverse on, those, on that new seafloor stuff, which is really interesting. Okay, um, and another, again, I'll say again for others, for anybody that's interested in looking up and researching this further, I would ask how did they discover this and um, what tools did they use and how um, and when might the Earth's poles flip again? When might we see a new magnetic stripe? So that's just for me. Those are the questions that I ask. Um, any questions on that before I let you guys go back to work? Okay, all of these five things I talked about will be on your test. That's why I wanted to make sure I talked about them. Okay.